We're going to look at the mechanism for the intramolecular ester formation to form a lactone. Now, the one I have in your slides looks like this. And I'm kind of starting at an earlier stage, so you need to be aware of that when you start this process. And this works just like a normal esterification reaction once you have the alcohol in there. But in your slides, this is what I've done. I've done this as a one-two step. I'm not going to go through the mechanism for the formation of the alcohol, but I am going to talk about it with you. So in the first step, we have sodium borohydride, and then we will work this up with acid. The product of the reaction with the sodium borohydride, I hope you know by now, is to reduce aldehydes and ketones to alcohol. So the product of this first step of the reaction is to convert that ketone to the alcohol. And that is what you actually result in from that first step. And this is actually the piece that we're going to work with in order to do the lactone formation. So once you have that alcohol in there, I'm just going to start drawing in the lone pair electrons. The next thing to do is to use that acid to protonate one of these oxygens. And you want to protonate the oxygen that will result in the weakest conjugate acid base pair. So we're going to protonate the carbonyl oxygen since it will give us the weakest conjugate acid by resonance. And I'm not going to draw the resonance structures for you today either. I hope you know what they are. Once I've protonated the carbonyl oxygen, this will activate the carbonyl carbon to award electrophilic aromatic, sorry, electrophilic addition with the nucleophile. This one just happens to happen through an intramolecular process. The alcohol is already built in, and now there are three other resonance structures. There are three resonance structures total, but I'm not going to draw the other two. So this oxygen will come in here and add to the carbonyl carbon, and as that occurs, you will break the pi bond. Now, depending on which resonance structure you're actually using, that may look a little different. This is going to result in a six-membered ring. And of course, you're going to have a tetrahedral intermediate here, too. My sister has been in town these three months, and we never happened to see her. So this is the intermediate we've now got. What we're going to do at this point is a proton transfer from solvent, or proton transfer through solvent. And we're going to take the proton off of here and transfer it to one of the oxygens up top. And it won't matter which one we actually transfer it to. What I've done doing this is produced a good leaving group. So this oxygen is now going to come in and reform the pi bond and we will kick out the leaving group. I really hope you're seeing how this looks pretty much exactly like esterification, except this one happens to be cyclic. Now Again, we would have some resonance structures. There are two more in addition to the one I've drawn, but I'm not going to draw them for you. 
And at this point, somebody in the solution, I'm going to use water, would come in and do the deprotonation. But it's actually likely to be some base that is added to the solution. And this will eventually result in the intramolecular esterification reaction, which gives us a lactone. A lactone is just a special type of ester, it's a cyclic ester. And then we've regenerated the acid catalyst. You will never play really.